So I'm Martine and this is the lovely Laura. So between us we have been in the beauty industry for 27 years so hopefully we can relay something back that you pick up on and be able to move your business forward a wee bit. So first things first, I just want everybody to be honest. Who in the room uses religiously a good skincare routine? Who is quite fanatic about that? Right, that's amazing. It's good to see so many of you do know how to look after your skin. But how many of you know how to recommend it to your clients and feel comfortable recommending it to your clients and customers? <laughs> yeah, not so many. <laughs> OK, good. That's what we're here today to help you with. So. Yeah, my next slide's up. I'm all new to this and I'm absolutely <laughs> petrified, so bear with me. <laughs> OK, um, so our basic, what everybody should be doing morning and night, every single one of you in here, whether it's male, female, regardless of your age, OK? So no excuses. You should be cleansed, toning and moisturising your skin twice a day, especially at night. Do not go to bed with your makeup on, please. OK? It's we'll not good you. for you. <laughs> we will shout at you. So basically, your cleanse is just to remove any makeup, any dark grime, any debris from the skin. Toning removes excess cleanser and also helps to close open pores. And then your moisturiser, depending on your skin type, is going to help to rebalance, re-moisturise and just leave your skin feeling generally really nice and healthy. So in addition to your basic skincare routine, obviously we have like our targeted range. So that's got your SPF, your exfoliators, eye creams, serums. So these can be added in in addition to that, depending on your customer's skincare, um, what, how much money they want to spend or how, how quickly they want a response from whatever their concern is. Um, so... Yeah. Yes, so, <laughs> yes, again, the serums and eye creams are designed to be used twice a day. Serum is a finer product, so it penetrates deeper into the skin, so it should be used underneath a moisturiser, not just on its own, because I know the old Sonia one, a lot of people are, oh, I'll just use that instead of using a moisturiser, but no, use serum underneath the moisturiser, <laughs> Karen. <laughs> <laughs> use the serum under your moisturiser, so your skin will get more benefit from it, and again, the eye cream will help reduce like puffiness, dark circles, any fine lines. So it's a really good product to recommend to people. So everybody wants to look a bit younger without having to go under the needle. You know, Botox and things is a big thing. Obviously, we're so good to have so many masks in the range because there is one for all skin types. So each mask just depends upon the skin type or the client or what they're what they're expecting from it. So like, say, your biocellulose mask. Personally, I like to use that the night before I'm going somewhere or whatever because I love how it makes my skin feel. It totally calms any redness or whatever. Whereas your sleep-in gel mask, they could be using three to four times a week. Or the marine mask, they could be using twice a week or whatever, depending on how their skin reacts and stuff with it. OK, with your exfoliation, um, a lot of people go, just don't do it, basically. So it's one of the most important steps in your skincare routine. So if your skin is dry, you want to be exfoliating the skin twice a week. Obviously not one day, then the next. Give a couple of days in between. And then oily skin types, normal skin types, once to twice a week is enough. But it's really an important product. And the more that you use it, obviously it takes away the dead skin cells. So when you're selling your moisturisers, you can let the client know that you know, if they've exfoliated their skin, they're not wasting their moisturiser, so it's been used into the skin that's needing it, not just the dead skin cells that's sitting on the top. So how do we recognise what skin type our customers have? So we need to remember that we're not all skincare experts, we're not nurses, we're not doctors, so we need to be compliant when we're talking about skincare. We can't diagnose or prescribe, so we have to listen to what they're telling us. So we've got a few buzzwords up here um, that you can be listening out for. So when you're doing your consultation with your client or you're asking them questions, it's important to listen and note down what they're saying, because sometimes people say they've got one skin type they could have a completely different skin type so if they're saying their skin's dull and dry and tight they're likely dehydrated um, but other people sometimes don't realize they can be oily but still have a bit of dehydration so what i like to personally do is kind of profile my clients write down everything they're saying so that i can then go back and ask them questions if they're using something is it working is it not working what did they like best or that kind of thing um, and that way you're, you're able to kind of recommend products for their skin condition or um, so that they're getting a response yeah. from it. 
what we need to do is we need to find out what they're currently using. So which skincare routine they have. What I mean, some people only use face wipes and moisturizer. That's fine. We're here to change that and educate them. So finding out what their skincare routine is currently, what products they use. This will give you an indication of you know, what they're comfortable using, what they're liking, maybe where they're going wrong as well, um, and also how much they're willing to spend. So if somebody comes to you and says that they're using creme de la mer, jackpot, okay? <laughs> <laughs> they're willing to spend a lot of money getting their skin to look good. Okay, so basically, um, never ever judge your customer. Like a lot of people say, oh no, she might not be able to afford it. It's amazing what people will pay for good skin. Okay, so never ever judge. Male customers, I've got quite a few that spend a fortune on skincare because they're getting more and more vain. Sorry, guys, but <laughs> you are. Okay, so never ever judge um, on what you think they, they want to buy from you. You just be on hand to give them the best knowledge that you can after like, receiving what they're telling you, what their um, problems and concerns are. So once you've kind of got to the bottom of what their main concern is, um, you're going to kind of you can relate that back to the buzzwords that we shared. You can then you kind of need to work out what their expectation is. Is it realistic? Because ideally, one product isn't going to fit the bill for everybody. It's not going to sort everybody's skincare out. Um, so what we kind of always like to see is, you know, like so somebody that doesn't use an exfoliator that's got dry skin. If they use it once, they will see a difference in their skin. They will feel better about it. But if somebody's got really problematic skin, one one use of a cleanser is not going to change all their issues. So you have to be realistic with what you're recommending them. So that yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that takes us to Laura. <laughs> so, like, basically, we now have, like, we've profiled the customer. We have the information we need. They've told us what they're looking for. So, how do we go on to recommend our products to our customers? So, obviously, we've got these profile sheets. You can make your own. The same way as we profile for getting, you know, your recruitment side. Profile for everything. Profile for skincare. Profile for all your products. The more information you have on each person the more that you can offer them. And obviously, the more you can offer them, the more profit you're going to make. So um, you find out their main concerns, and it gives us all the information they need. So what we like to do um, is to create this wish list. And I'll let Martine tell you a wee bit more about the wish list. So this is just something we kind of derived through um, our team. So. Ideally, you give the customer the brochure away with them, but you've circled several things that's going to be beneficial to their skin concerns. So right away, they know that they're not just buying a cleanser and that's the end of the journey. They know that maybe when you're going to follow them up in a few weeks that it might be time to add in an exfoliator, it might be time to add in their serum. Um, so that way, you've got a copy of it when you've done your profile and sheet, but they've also got a copy of it in the book. So nine times out of 10 people text you and say, oh, listen, can you order me that other thing you were talking about? Because they like what's been happening with the previous product that they've been using. So ideally, taking a profile them and use the products, you would kind of give them the one that's going to be giving them the most benefit initially, so that then each time they're going to see a difference and they want to keep going with what you've recommended for them. Okay, so I like to, oh, well, we like to use the brochures because not only are you highlighting the skincare, but they can look through the brochure and they're always seeing different products as well, so it's not just what you've recommended, but they might be interested or they've maybe heard of somebody that's done a C9. Um, and it'll spark interest in that. So it's always, you know, you're, you're widening your, your product range to people as well. So you, just rather than having a, a sheet of paper saying, this is product one, two, three, four, just circle it, you know, and give that brochure. And then they've got that there on hand, um, you know, for reference for future as well. Okay, so they say the fortune is in the follow-up and there's nothing truer. Um, don't sit back and tr think this business is going to happen. You have to go out there every day and work on this business. So it's so important to follow up your customers. Um, just having an ongoing connection, letting them know that you haven't forgotten about them. So becoming their friend, becoming somebody that they can trust to come to, you know, if they've got a question, they're not going to just feel like they've been left, you know, they've bought a product and that's them left. So always stay in touch. You don't need to hound them. You don't need to message them every single day, but just touch base with them. It's, I mean, good customer service, that's all it is. And that's what people are looking and that's what's going to keep your customer with you rather than veering off to somebody else. 
um, you've already filled out a wish list, so they've got a copy of that. So it's not going to be, you know, like your phone and saying, oh, you need this, you need that. You've already talked about the products with the customers. So, you know, it's just, all right, remember we talked over that. Would you like a sample pack? Would you like to try that? So it's an easy way to get these experience packs, sample packs out into the customer's hand without being pushy or feeling like, you know, you're totally bombarding them. Um, obviously, the more sample packs you've got out, the more products you can, you know, recommend and let them use, the more profit you, you're going to make. So, I mean, we've nothing to hide. We have some of the best products on the market. I mean, between us, we've worked with a lot of skincare companies, and these ones are up there with the best. So, so again, where you're following up, this is going to help you to retain your customers. So, if you're going to follow them up to find out what they loved, what, what they didn't like so much maybe, because not everything everybody's going to love, not everything's going to suit everybody that you recommend, but don't take that personally. You can only recommend what you what you know is good for certain skin types, but they could have something underlying, that, hence why it's not, not doing what it's meant to do. Um, but if you're giving them obviously the best sort of customer service, you're, you're noting down when they bought something, when they would maybe need to replenish it, then that way you're keeping on top of it and they're, they're, you're showing your customer care, so they're more likely to come back to you because you are looking after them. Right, so just to finish on this slide, um, Christmas and birthday wish lists are a really, really good retail tool because you know, you've already created this wish list with your customer, but what you want to do is try and get an email address, obviously with the customer's you know, <laughs> consent for that. Don't just go randomly emailing people. Um, so for a loved one, you know, maybe a family member, a husband, I mean, everybody's looking for easy ideas for Christmas presents. Send them a little email saying these two, three, four products that your, your wife, your partner has shown an interest in. It could bring a, generate a sale. The other thing is birthdays. I like to send out a wee birthday card with a, just a little money off voucher just as a thank you. Um, stick another couple of samples in if you've got them because it's always you know growing your retail business as well. So, so we've just put together a few different ideas just for kind of dry skin, combination skin, um, aging skin, what products we would kind of see would, would help customers. Um, obviously, this will help you be able to be a wee bit more confident in what you recommend to people and um, how to get them started on their skincare journey. Like we've obviously really struggled because, I mean, our, our passion is skincare to, like, Condense, condense this listen. into such a small slot. So um, what we would recommend is everybody um, attends the skincare training. Um, the knowledge that you're going to get and about the products, um, the ingredients, how the ingredients work, you know, what kind of skin they're suitable for, you know, it's just going to gain your confidence in talking to people about them and ultimately, again, the more confidence you've got, the more you're going to talk about, more you're going to recommend, the more profit you're going to make and that's why we're all doing this, to make some extra money. So the next date for the skincare training in Scotland is the 6th of October, but obviously, depending on where you live, there is other training dates available. Um, so I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank you all for listening to us and me shaking away on the stage. So. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously we were made aware there is a kind of skin bar out, um, outside if you've not already seen it. So if there is products that you haven't tried from different ranges, go have a feel for them, see how they feel on your skin. And then, like I said before, um, be a product of the product. If you're not using it, you don't know what it feels like. Mm -hmm. You're not able to explain that to people and they're not going to buy it off you. So. Woo! Thank you.